Alright, welcome. In this video, I'm going to be working Algebra 2 Quiz 9.4, which is about solving equations that involve exponentials and logs. Okay. And so we're just going to start off, and really our idea is that we're going to get rid of a log by taking some number to both sides power. We're going to get rid of an exponential by taking a log of both sides. So over here, I've got log base 5 of x plus 4 equals 3. So to get rid of this log with base 5, I need to take 5 to both sides power. So 5 to the log base 5 of x plus 4 equals 5 to the 3. And we know this is one of our fundamental identities. That, okay, 5 to the log base 5 of a thing is just going to be that thing. So I've got x plus 4 equals 5 to the 3rd. And then I'll solve for x by subtracting 4 from both sides. Uh, this would be an exact answer, but I think we can do a little better. We know that 5 to the 3rd is 125, so if I take 125 and I subtract 4, that will be 121. To find the value of x that makes the equation true, give an exact value, so that might be an answer in terms of a log or in terms of like e or something. Oh, unlikely because it's 3 to the x, though. So I'm going to go over here, and I'm going to first isolate the exponential. So I need to kind of go in reverse order of operations. Pim, Dosky, do addition and subtraction. Get rid of those first. So I'm going to add 7 to both sides. Okay, then I'm going to isolate the exponential by dealing with multiplication and division. Okay, I've got this multiplication by 5. I need to divide by both sides by 5. Okay, now to get this variable down out of the exponent, I'm going to need to take a log of both sides. Now, you can take a natural log if you want, if that's how you were trained. Um, but in my class, we said, OK, the base of the exponential should be the base of the log. I'm going to take log base 3 of both sides. And then this log base 3 of 3 to the x, again, just like before, the log base 3 of 3 to a thing is just going to be that thing. So this is x over here. This is log base 3 of 8. Okay. Now we're going to solve the equation, and we're going to like approximate it to the nearest integer okay, using that table of values. So okay, I've got all this stuff happening on the inside of the natural log. But the natural log itself is all that's going on on that left side of the equation. So it's already isolated. I don't need to do anything. In fact, you know, trying to do algebra from the inside of a log is not going to work for you. So what we want to do is we are going to want to take e to both sides power. Because what this is saying is log base e of 3x minus 4 divided by 2, yeah, that equals 5. So I'm going to take e to both sides power. Base of the log needs to be the base of the exponential e to the natural log of 3x minus 4 over 2 equals e to the 5, which we're going to say is approximately 148. Okay, But I've got over here e to the natural log of a thing. It's just going to be that thing. So 3x minus 4 divided by 2 equals 148. I'm going to multiply both sides by 2. That'll be... 296. Oh, yeah, okay. I was very, uh, remember when I made this problem, I was proud of myself. Um, add 4, you get 300. Divide by 3, that's going to be x equals 100. Right on the back, we've got number 4. g of x is log base 9 of x plus 2, where is g of x equal to 3 halves? Okay, well, we're just going to set those two things equal to each other log base 9 of x plus 2 equals 3 halves. Okay, I'm going to take 9 to both sides power. Okay. When I take 9 to the 3 halves, I'm going to take the square root of 9 and cube that. Square root because of the 1 half power cubed because of the 3 in the numerator. So that's 3 to the 3rd is 27. So I've got x plus 2 equals 27. Subtract 2 from both sides, and you would get x equals 25. OK, now this one, th this is a, an example of a log equation that's going to return an extraneous solution. I'm looking at it, and I know how these play out. So I'm buying these with a log property. If I'm adding two logs with the same base, I can multiply their arguments to write it as a single log. So I'm going to say log base 2 of x times x minus 6 that's equal to 4. And you know I might simplify that, or maybe not simplify, like dis distribute that x over the x minus 6. 
log base two of x squared minus six x is equal to four. And then I'm gonna take two to both sides power. Okay, so two to the log base two of x squared minus six x, which is just gonna be x squared minus six x using that fundamental identity. Be doing that a lot when we're solving these exponential and log equations. And that's gonna be two to the fourth power. And two to the fourth is 16. So I've got x squared minus six x equals 16. Okay, yeah, I know I see how this is gonna go. I'm gonna subtract the 16 from both sides to set it to zero, x squared minus six x minus 16. So I'm hoping to factor. And I'm thinking to myself, what two numbers multiply to negative 16 while adding to negative six? And so it's gonna be eight and two, I think it's gonna be negative eight and positive two because of the negative six. Okay, so I'm gonna go over here. Say x minus eight times x plus two equals zero. So that would mean that x was either equal to eight or x was equal to negative two, but I need to go back in and check. Okay, log of eight minus six, log of eight, these are fine. That's not taking the log of zero, not taking the log of a negative number. Uh, we're gonna be all right. When I plug in x equals negative two though, I've got two logs of negative numbers. Neither of those are defined, so we're gonna say that's an extraneous solution. Scratch it out, uh, move on. So now we're gonna use this table of logs to approximate the value of x that makes the equation true. Okay, so I'm just gonna solve for an exact solution and then show you how to approximate it. So it's gonna start with isolating the, the exponential, so I'm gonna subtract one, dividing by four. Natural log of both sides will give me x minus three equals natural log three. And then x is going to equal 3 plus the natural log of 3. That's exact. Okay. An approximation for that would be 3 plus 1.1 is going to be 4.1. And that's what I would say. It's approximate because I looked up that value from the, from the table, which in the big picture is actually not very different from you know computing something using a calculator. That's going to be an approximate answer as well. All right, then 7 minus 11 to the x equals 3. Okay, I'm going to isolate the exponential, subtract 7 from both sides. The negative of 11 to the x is equal to negative 4. Okay, really this is 11 to the x first multiplied by negative 1 second because of PEMDAS, exponents before multiplication by negative 1. So it's like negative 1 times 11 to the x equals negative 4. So I'm going to divide by negative 1 and just say, okay, 11 to the x equals 4. And then I'm going to take a log with base 11 of both sides. Okay, and so that's going to be x is log with base seven, oh no, log with base 11 and argument four. But I don't know, I have natural logs in this table here. So what I'm gonna need to do is I'm going to need to use the change of base formula. So this is equal to the log with any base of four divided by the log with that same base of 11. And I'm gonna choose natural log because that's what I've got a table of down here. So I'm gonna say natural log of four divided by natural log of 11. It's gonna be 1.4 over 2.4. And I think in my class we can get credit if you wrote that. Um, but we can say that's 14 over 24, and that can be reduced to 7 over 12. Okay, so I'll just do that there. All right, that's form A. Let's move on to form B. So we're over here. We are... Okay, same thing. Okay, we've got a log with base 4, so we're going to take 4 to both sides power to get rid of that log. And then to the log base four of a thing, it's just gonna be that thing. It's one of our fundamental identities. So x plus five equals four to the third. Okay, and okay, you wanna leave it as four to the third, that's probably not the best, but it's not the worst either. Um, you know, in my class, we've got that table of cubes over um, on the wall, and four to the third is 64. Okay, and then I'm gonna subtract five from both sides, and I'm gonna say x is 61. Exponential equation is shown below. Find the values of x to make the equation true. We need to isolate that exponential. So first I'm gonna add seven to both sides. That'd be 36 equals three times four to the x. Okay, isolate the exponential, divide by three. Okay, take a log with base four of both sides. 
Okay, and if I take the log base 4, 4 to the x, well, it'll just give me x. And exact value, well, that's, that's a log. That's an exact value. Okay, there's not anything, we, uh, you know, like, that was the reason I did this, because 12 is divisible by 4. Um, I want you to know that, hey, there's nothing more that you can do with this besides being say natural log of 12 divided by that, natural log of 4, with the change of base formula, which is no, no better, right? But there's not anything we can do with the fact that 12 and 4, you know, are divisible by each other. We're not going to do that. Okay, that's as far as we can go. All right. On this one, okay, I've got a natural log, which is base e, can I put that in there, of this thing equals 2. So I need to take e to both sides of power. So e to the natural log of 3x minus 4 divided by 5, uh, that's going to equal e to the 2. e to the 2 is approximately equal to 7. Okay, so I'm just going to plug in 7 there, and this will be 3x minus 4 divided by 5. So I'm going to start by multiplying 5 times 7. Oh, this is going to divide. Okay, so I'll have 35. So 3x minus 4 equals 35. I'm going to add 4 to both sides. I'm going to divide by 3. And 39 divided by 3, that's 13. Okay, that's going to be the closest integer. All right, on the back, what value of x is g of x equal to 3 halves? Okay, well, I'm just going to take g of x. And I'm going to set it equal to 3 halves. And then, OK, this was, this was generous of me. I think we're going to eventually have to take 16 to the 3 halves power. I'm going to take 16 to both sides. Now, 16 to the 3 halves is the square root of 16 cubed. 4 to the third is again 64. Okay, it's the second time that's come up on this quiz. So, you know, if you did it the once, you probably didn't have to look it up again. Uh, it's going to be x plus 3. So x plus 3 equals 64. Subtract 3 from both sides, and you get 61. Um, then this one, okay, this is one where we're going to have to use a log property. We're not going to be able to just isolate one of these logs. So where we've got a sum of two logs, we're going to add these two things together by combining them into a single log. We're going to utilize that log property. I was just thinking about how I could, uh, how I could make this a minus and, and do more equations on this in the next unit, um, and I think I will. So log base 2 of x minus 4 plus log base 2 of x equals 5. That means log base 2 of x minus 4 times x. So I need to distribute the x across the x and the negative 4. So it would be x squared minus 4x. That's equal to 5. Then I take 2 to both sides power. Okay, So 2 to the log base 2 of that would just be that. And that's going to equal 2 to the 5, which is 32. So I've got x squared minus 4x. I'm going to need to subtract that 32 from both sides. And then I'm thinking. OK, 8 and 4 multiplied to 32. It's going to need to be negative 8 and positive 4. Okay, so that'll give me x equals 8, me, or x equals negative 4. But I need to check my solution for extraneous solutions. OK, log, if I plug in x equals 8, I'll have log base 2 of 4 plus log base 2 of 8 equals um, That sounds reasonable enough. But if I plug in negative 4, I'm going to have log of a negative number, and that makes it an extraneous solution. So log of a negative number, not defined. There's, you know, especially with base 2, uh, right, there's no p exponent we can put on 2. There's no power we can raise 2 to to get negative, or to get a negative number, right? It's not going to happen. All right. Use the table of logs to approximate the value of x that makes the equation true. I'm going to solve for an exact solution, because that's what you're going to be asked to do on the test, and then I'm going to approximate it. So I'm going to start by subtracting 1. 2e to the x minus 7 equals 14. I'm going to isolate the exponential by dividing by 2. Okay. Then I'm going to take the natural log of both sides. So the natural log of e to the x minus 7 is just going to be x minus 7. That's going to be natural log 7. And I solve for x by adding 7 to both sides. Yeah, that's an exact value. Uh, natural log of 7 is 1.9. So if I added 7 to 1.9, that'd be 8.9. So that's my exact solution. That's my approximation. Okay, and then 11 minus 5 to the x equals 3. Okay, I'm going to subtract 11. Negative of 5 to the x equals negative 8. Okay, I'm going to divide both sides by negative 1. 
That'd be five to the x equals positive eight. If you need more discussion on why that's okay, I go back to the equivalent problem in form A and I, I talked quite a bit about it. And then I'm gonna take a log with base five of both sides. And that's equal to log base five of eight. Uh, that's x equals log base five of eight. That's an exact solution. Okay. An approximate solution, I would use the change of base formula. I mean, this is true. Natural log of eight divided by natural log of five, right? That one that's higher goes up on top of the fraction. Um, my approximation, I'm gonna say x is approximately equal to natural log of eight is 2.1 divided by the natural log of five was 1.6. Okay, which, and that's 21 over 16. I don't know, that's not, yeah, it's not reducible. Okay, so that's going to be all for Algebra 2 Quiz 9.4. Thanks for watching. Hope this helped.